Oh, I'm, I would be happy to. Um, and by the way, I'll just say this because I was a professor, right? So sometimes you get questions. It's really interesting. You go from student to professor. It's really challenging. You go from asking questions to answering the questions, right? So I learned this, right? I can pass it on to anybody to your faculty. It's like this. So you get a question, you don't know the answer to it. So here are a couple of responses you can give, right? One is, you know what? I think that's really well covered in your textbook. I don't want to take time away from the class to <laughs> answer that now. Um, another good response is to say, OK, can anybody help Johnny out with this? <laughs> Well, that's your homework. I'm really disappointed. Everyone needs to go figure that one out. Um, another good one is this. You know, that's a really good question, but a more important question is this. That I know the answer to. And finally, if none of that works, you can say, got to tell you, I've seen the exam, and it ain't on it. So <laughs> anyway, so I, I, I welcome your questions. Yes, sir, in the back. If you could comment on the role of technology oh. and how it's played a role in lack of respect and in declining abilities and in interpersonal communication, which my training has always said has been a key factor in gaining respect, be able, being able to communicate. How, how is technology yeah. good or bad? Yeah, that's great. I actually give some talk about that, uh, working in a virtual world. So you've had situations where um, right, you're next to somebody in office and they're texting or emailing one another as opposed to actually getting up and, and shaking hands. Technology is really good for some situations, like answering very specific focused questions. Um, it is not good if there needs to be some sort of a conversation, if there is absolutely any risk at all of the message being misinterpreted in some way. Um, I believe that it's our responsibility when we onboard particularly the next generation that we actually teach them about this issue of respect. Um, a friend of mine told me recently that he had a, um, a, a, a job applicant come in and deliver his resume in text writing. <laughs> Fan of technology, ain't going away, really, really important. But I think, and, and organizations do this, come up with some guidelines around that about what is appropriate and inappropriate use of that technology. A uh, question here, I believe? Yes, ma'am. Um, tell us a little bit about your company, oh. Color, Color. Oh. Um, you know what? Uh, you can go on colormycompany.website. Um, you know, after 9-11, and I'm sure many of us in the room, um, <clears throat> we kind of took a step back, right? And we wanted to decide what's important in life like what really matters. And I was actually uh, trained as a child clinical psychologist, and I'd had this idea for a long time um, that I really wanted to create something that was giving back to the world. Um, and I wanted to create a for-profit model um, in which the, um, our giving was completely transparent. Because you go out and you buy a pink phone, which is great, but you never really know how much is being given to that organization, or is it after profits? So one facet of it, first of all, everything was American made. The artwork, except for my grandfather's, we have some, oh my God, was made by children. Um, but 10% of whatever you buy goes to a charity, and you have a selection of charities called the Charity Choice Program that teaches young people about charitable giving. Um, so it's 10%. You spend ten dollars, you know one dollar is given to this organization. So um, yeah, I'd be happy to speak with you more about that. But it's it's applying children's artwork to different kinds of uh, materials, cards, uh, pill pillowcases has been our big hit. Imagine pillowcase, horse design, slumber party. Kids get to color it, sign their name, put it in the dryer, sleep on it, take it home, that kind of thing. So thank you for asking. Yeah, a couple more questions. Yes, ma'am. I guess I was a little amazed uh, with all of the publicity around um, the Monday cyber purchasing, huh. online purchasing, and uh, the breakdown of the hours that people do it on the right. job. Right, right, right. Would you care to comment on that at all? It's kind of um, what you've been talking about in a way. Yeah, so um, well, one thing, did you see the thing about the woman who uh, used uh, pepper spray to spray the yeah. other people? Love that I tweeted it out, like, a great s reflection on our society. Um, look, here's the deal. People are going to do personal things at work, and, and um, there has actually been some research that demonstrates it makes people more productive. So here's the thing. You need to create a really strong culture where people want to be engaged, and we want to treat them like adults, right? You get into, if you think you have an employee who's really taking so much time away from getting their job done, I'm one of those people who really believes in working to objectives, right? Um, they take so much time, you've got to address that. 
but when I start treating my employees like children, I've got a problem, right? So it, it, it's really clear that, it, and that's a cultural issue, right? And I go into organizations, I go into organizations where people are doing that all the time, and I know there's no, there's no real policy you're going to put into place to police that because people are going to go to the bathroom and do it. So I'm okay with it because I also recognize that for the most part it's confined to this Christmas season, although they're going to be Facebooking and doing other things as well. I guess I react. The thing that surprised me wasn't an hour where you're purchasing your gifts, you know, online in a day, but five hours. That seems a little extreme. I don't know. I haven't seen the exact uh, data on it. I, you know, look, you know what a smart company would do? I'll tell you what a smart company would do because they know they're going to do it anyway. They're going to say, we're going to give 35, 40 minutes, whatever it is, in the morning and afternoon. Everyone's going to come in and buy their Christmas presents online. Look, you can't control behavior. You try to control behavior in some way. By the way, just uh, my, I do have my smartphone. I want, I want to tell you this. These are amazing. No doubt, unbelievable. Okay? You unlock your car door, whatever. You compare the advances in this technology to the quote-unquote advances in the technology of managing and leading people, and it's a real disappointment. Because we know what it takes to be an effective leader for a long time. And I'm talking about this from an HR professional standpoint. We are failing you. We're really failing you as professionals in creating you as an awesome program a conduit to leading your people aside. Okay, question. You know, I often think at this stage that I've either been so incredibly clear that you have no questions or so confusing <laughs> that you possibly can't ask one. All right, I'm going to do a book signing in the back of the room, okay? Thank you again for, for being here. If you have any questions, I will. I also have business cards. I do birthdays and bar mitzvahs if you're interested. So please come in and chat. Don't leave. Namaste.